Jackson for another episode of No Party Preference. I'm Josh, here today with Adam. Yeah, hello. If you want to follow us on all of our social medias, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. Hear all our podcasts, social media, Instagram, TikTok, at Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag, YouTube at Game Rage Magazine, probably soon to be on Pornhub and OnlyFans at Game Rage Magazine. Uh, you can find us there. Adam's at All Gas No Trash Official. If you want to go listen to the All Gas No Trash podcast, which is the Game Rage Music podcast, it's very good. So, I mean, I'm biased, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> today, why, why did you have to say that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I, I'm just being honest. I'm biased. So today we're going to talk about, obviously, the, the, the title of this is, uh, you know, Bitcoin Shields for Trump, basically, uh, because that's kind of what happened today. Uh, I saw I got to watch the Donald Trump uh, keynote speech at the Bitcoin 2024. I don't know if it's a convention or a fucking con. I don't know what the fuck it is. Now, I will also say, I do think this is kind of a scam. Like this Bitcoin conference, it's turned into like... Coachella, I think, because I was I was thinking like, oh, dude, because it's in Vegas next year. And I was like, hey, we should go and like cover it like that'd be really cool. It's close enough. Like we go stay for a couple days. It's like a three day thing. Um, it's eight hundred dollars a fucking ticket for the cheapest fucking thing. And I'm like, who the fuck is paying eight hundred dollars to go to a conference and hear about cryptocurrencies? What the fuck are you possibly going to tell me? That is worth $800. I mean, I I don't get that. Now, granted, I'm not super huge into the cryptocurrency world. I'm not like a crypto shill. I'm not against it, but I'm not like a huge proponent of it. Uh, I don't I I feel like that's like they're taking advantage of the fucking the marks, man. They're just like, ooh, we know they're going to show up for this shit. So let's fucking charge $800. And then if you want to get into like. You know, the VIP, it's like, oh, it's like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, for what? For nothing. It's crazy. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna apply for media passes for next year so we can go for free. Uh, we probably won't get it, especially after them hearing this episode of when when they Google Game Rage magazine Bitcoin, this is I'm sure what's gonna show up, and they're gonna be like, oh no, absolutely fucking not. But I will say this: if you're listening to this and you're from Bitcoin conference or whatever the fuck it's called and you don't fucking let us come to cover this because maybe we quote unquote possibly say things you don't like you're a coward you're cowards and you're bitches i'll stand by that <clears throat> anyways so trump is there at this uh this this event and in classic just general politician fuckery style supposed to go on at 2 p.m motherfucker doesn't show up till like 2 35 walks out on the stage And I didn't think, I thought that the crypto conference was sort of going to be kind of like neutral when it came to presidential candidates and shit like that. I didn't think they would be like immediately shilling for him. But when they announced him, he was the 45th president of the United States and soon to be the 47th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And I'm like, all right. Hold on now, fellas. That was a little unnecessary. But it tells me exactly where you're at. It tells me that you are all in favor of, you know, you Trump, which is fine. You're entitled to your opinions. I just thought the organization itself would have maybe taken a little, you know, neutral, more neutral stance, I guess, instead of just throwing it out there. But okay, whatever. Uh, Trump comes on and he's basically just talking about how he is going to essentially just basically not fuck with crypto at all <laughs> in he, what way he's just because he's like oh you know kamala kamala's a low iq opponent and you know <laughs> she's got the lowest iq she doesn't understand the bitcoins and you know i'm what? telling you right now as if he doesn't right as if he does <laughs> he's like i'm telling you right now i'm gonna fire the sec chairman i'm gonna fire the secretary of the treasury which obviously you're gonna pick your own fucking secretary of treasury we don't need we need to hear that but okay I'm going to fire all them, and I'm going to immediately tell my federal government that they are going to stop doing anything against cryptocurrency. They're going to make sure that you all can do what you love to do and be trading in your cryptocurrencies, right? That's, that's what he was going for. And so uh, everyone in the audience was just ran, was wildly applauding. 
But then when he was saying some other political shit that you could tell, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Like, these guys don't actually agree with Trump on most of his policies, but they agree with this one thing about the Bitcoin thing. (laughs) Yeah. And it's almost kind of like, damn, dude, you're going to, like, shill yourself out and sell yourself for just this one little thing. And you're just going to be like, oh, I'm going to vote for that guy because he does this one thing that I like, even though maybe I don't like all these other things that he does. But, man, that one thing, I really like that. So I'm going to fucking I'm going to stick to that, which is which is fucking crazy. But. Uh, anyways, he went on to talk about how essentially he is going to back off on any cryptocurrency regulation that we're trying to institute. The CBDC, the central bank digital currency that has been floated around for the last, I don't know, couple of years that the U.S. is wanting to make. The U.S. Treasury wants to make a U.S. dollar-backed central bank digital currency, like a digital dollar, like a dollar coin or whatever. I don't know. Like, it'd be Bitcoin for dollars. Now, I already... I mean, my my theory years and years ago was that they're never going to allow cryptocurrency to exist. Like, the fiat currency governments can never allow it to exist because, it, yes, it is a superior uh, form of, of monetary policy because you can do it and remain completely anonymous with using it. I mean, also, it, it could do banking better than... Than banks. Than banks, I think, because banks use, like, old languages. I mean, I, I think most people don't even... Most people, I mean, shit, the competency for what they use, like, Fort... Uh, I think it's, like, COBOL and uh, Fortran or something like that. Uh, those are old fucking languages that are basically... Dead languages. And they're the obsolete, most, essentially. They're built on that language. I mean, and I don't know how fucking slow they are, but like the, what is it, like transactions per minute for like, uh, well, at least for like Ethereum, do you like yeah. Ethereum? That is supposed to be what I think is the future of currency itself is like, being able to do numerous transactions for a fraction of for a fraction of a fee, right? Right. Because yeah. like when you have POS systems like Clover or uh, whatever you can imagine, uh, that that cost of the uh, you know if you have to pay um, a certain amount of money, like thirty dollars, to cover the expense of like. Uh, you know, if you only pay two dollars for a sale or something like that, yeah, like the person, like the user or whatever, like the person purchasing something, and then like the rest of the cost of like that transaction for for them to swipe their card, and it's like, who who the fuck knows what that fee is? But the goal for like cryptocurrency and like blockchain technology is for them to make it really fucking cheap to do that shit, to have transactions be done in that way. And then for banking to be anonymous and for, I think the potential for that is really fucking cool. But I think maybe like you're saying, yeah, it, it would hurt <laughs> a lot of countries to try to switch to that or because it's like essentially you're giving up the U.S. dollar for this new thing. That sure, they, yeah. But at the same token, man, if, if this thing is doing money better than what we already have we will there's the potential that we could also get behind because some other countries are already adopting that shit right exactly uh and the one thing too that i mean as we learned in 2008 banks are too big to fail the government will keep them around because they're so entrenched and ingrained in our society's function base function they have to exist and they don't work anymore. They're obsolete. Reserve fractional banking does not fucking work anymore. Maybe it did for like 30, 40, 50 years. In the 2020s, that shit does not fucking work. And what's worse is the banks have not only, like after 2008, too big to fail, they've only gotten bigger than they were in 2008. And now they're definitely like, oh, fuck, we can't, We the government cannot let these fail, which is why... I don't think that 
again, they will allow a currency to exist that's not, that doesn't keep the U.S. I mean, Trump did say it in his speech. Yes, you boys can just play. I mean, he didn't say this word for word, but he paraphrased essentially. Yes, you guys can play over here with your little digital currencies. But he said multiple times that the U.S. dollar will remain the number one currency in the world. And we have to have that monetary policy as a country because if we don't, our entire financial system collapses. Because our whole entire financial system is based on the U.S. dollar fiat currency being the global number one reserve currency and being the number one used currency in in the entire world. What if it crashes and if if the country doesn't have fucking... Bitcoin its reserves. Let's say like the US, I don't know why it would fall apart, but we'll say it does. And the US dollar is worthless, but you have Bitcoin in the reserves. Yeah, well, we do. The government has a stash of Bitcoin, all Bitcoin that they've stolen from people um, that have been that that's been the result of seizures of like arrests. And they and, and again, I think some of the arrests that they do, uh, one of the guys you talked about uh God damn it, let me get the guy's name. Um, it was the guy who invented and ran the uh, uh, Silk Road on the dark web. Uh, what's his name? Ross Ulbricht. And he ran it for, it was up for like a couple of years. And essentially the FBI fucking somehow got him. And they jacked all of his cryptocurrency because that's what he was doing. That's how he was making money was he was... People could pay an anonymous cryptocurrency for guns, drugs, fucking human trafficking. Fuck. I mean, whatever you wanted. Yeah. That website had no. It was eBay for criminals, basically. Mm -hmm. And again, I think some of those things you should be able to. If you want to buy drugs, buy fucking drugs. Who cares? If you want to buy fucking guns, buy guns. Who gives a fuck? Uh, Yeah, sure. Maybe the human trafficking portion, that's what needs to be cracked down upon because you shouldn't be allowed to sell fucking people. Um, But when... They cracked down on him. That's what they were doing. They were basically charging a transaction fee for people doing stuff. And he ended up essentially amassing. um, Where was the number? There was a number of how much money he had amassed uh, in, in cryptocurrencies. Oh, restitution. He had he had. Fucking three and a half billion dollars in cryptocurrency that he made off of that. And it was 50,000 Bitcoin that that he basically fucking made off of this. Mm -hmm. Um, And. What's funny is that Bitcoin had been stolen. Some of that Bitcoin had been stolen from him. That big cash had been stolen from him back in 2013. And. As part of his restitution deal, he owed $183 million in restitution. So what he did is he basically said, hey, you guys can fucking, I don't know what happened to this money. Like somebody stole it from me. So like if you can figure out where it's at and you can, t- you can get it, how about we call that square on what I owe? And they said, yeah, sure, sure as shit. So this anonymous, completely untraceable monetary wallet, well, they found it. They found out who took it. They found out where it was. They were able to track all that shit. And as I've been saying from from the beginning, and I think we talked about this before on maybe the Central Unintelligence podcast, but when it comes to crypto, I don't think that, I I think the United States government has the backdoor to everything. I think that that's just inherent in every fucking technological piece of code, equipment, anything that's made in the United States or majorly popular in use I, I fully believe that the NSA, the CIA, and agencies within the federal government have the keys to the kingdom. They have the back doors to just get into whatever the fuck they want. And I don't know that Bitcoin is an exception to that. I, I don't know if, I think maybe there are some cryptocurrencies that could possibly be exceptions to that. However, I do think that this is a prime example of a Bitcoin wallet that was stolen and the government was able to figure out where it went. And yeah, who took it? That's probably more hum- user error than it was. Could be the, the Bitcoin environment. I think. I think <clears throat> whatever site he was using it on, maybe or whatever ended up happening. If he used some type of website that fished him, or however these people ended up stealing the shit. If he put it on like a central, 
exchange or something for Maybe. crypto that he just left it there sure. and, and then stop the people were keeping track of his movement and they're like oh he put it on exchange we'll hack the site and we'll fucking steal it that that, again, that would be more on the end of the user being the problem as opposed to like the bitcoin environment right right but what i'm saying is is this no currency is truly fucking anonymous especially in the digital world because everything is logged everything is tracked and unless you are a forensic specialist at covering your fucking tracks, there's going to be a chain in the process of you purchasing things or doing things that that currently exists that they are able to track and find that. That's basically probably what happened. And like you say, it is probably user error. I don't think it's the Bitcoin's fault, but I think in the environment that we have, you can't use the Bitcoin in a truly anonymous way. And you could if you started with it, if that was the only transactions you were only doing on Bitcoin and you never had to use US dollars and Bitcoin was all you were using, then yeah, it would be the perfect environment. But if you're using those Bitcoin to purchase something on a website or somewhere else that obviously logs, tracks that, and there's, inf- that's probably how they figured it out. Was you probably bought something with it somewhere mm. and then that's how they figured it out. So again, it's not the Bitcoin's fault, but there is a way, because clearly there is obviously a way where they can do that, where they can track it down. Yeah, and I don't know, I don't know how the dark web works as far as uh, how it preserves like anonymity. Because if they were using this thing called Silk Road, like how, how, how secure was that thing to begin with? Well, yeah. not secure enough because the government fucking figured it out in two years. It was only it was only around for a couple of years. Yeah. And then they figured it out and shut it down. So, you know, it, there is no foolproof system at this point right now. There's always a way that the government's going to be able to get in there and figure it out and fuck with it. I, I, feel, I feel like. And one of the fucking interesting things. So... As I'm watching this the speech with my dad, there's this there's this thing that comes up that says uh, it's Elon Musk. And he's like, hello, I'm Elon Musk. And I right now, I just want to say that if you scan this QR code and go to this website, the Bitcoin 2024 website to so this QR code, if you put in whatever Bitcoin or whatever um, of these certain cryptocurrencies, we will you, you send it to us and we will send you back double. That, that was that's not a scam, huh? It, there's there's some that's like a rampant scam or something. Well, yeah, yeah, but that's like that was officially like a thing that they put out or whatever, yeah. and it was at the conference thing, I guess. And so, uh, of course, my dad's like, oh, oh, I want to do this. So I was like, okay, whatever. So he goes, <laughs> he goes and he's trying to buy this. Bi- he he didn't want to buy Bitcoin, so he wanted to buy Dogecoin, right? The meme one. The meme money, which he doesn't even fucking know what that is. He wants to buy because it's only 13 cents. So he's like, I'm going to buy some fucking meme, some Dogecoin. And I said, because that's Elon Musk Dogecoin. And I'm like, why the fuck are you going to buy that one? Because Elon Musk and Trump are friends. And if if Trump gets, when Trump, no, not if, when Trump gets elected, he's going to take Elon Musk Dogecoin and he's going to make that worth a lot of money. I don't think And I'm like, I don't think that's how it works, first of all. I don't think he's supporting Elon Musk either. I know he donated a substantial amount of money to his campaign, but he's also said that he's going to regress any type of policy as far as like fossil fuels and shit will go. So that obviously that hurts him with electric vehicles. So it's like, why would he support Dogecoin? Well, it kind of doesn't because how do, how do we make electricity? We make it through fossil fuels. That's how we make most electricity. So if you make electricity cheaper, you also make the cost of running an electric car cheaper. Yeah, so but who's gonna turn? Who's gonna? Who can afford a car right now? And who's gonna switch to electric? No Everybody's one, paying fucking gas. Well, listen, Everybody, no one can afford anything right now. Yeah, <laughs> this is the fucking problem. But I just don't see how, why Trump would endorse fucking I, Dogecoin. I agree. I don't see that either. But anyways, he's fucking like, oh, I'm gonna do this. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm helping him do it. And he goes and he's trying to buy it on his fucking Capital One card, and it keeps declining. It keeps declining. It keeps declining. I have a reason. I, I think I know why. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're right. Why, why you think that is? Because Capital One doesn't allow purchases of crypto because that hurts fucking them. A lot of, basically every credit card, no, almost nobody, every bank, yeah. specifically has a new term and condition that they put in like three or four years ago yeah. that says you are not allowed to use this to 
purchase crypto. You are not allowed to use this to purchase cryptocurrency, which to me makes no fucking. I mean, I get why, but like, who are you to tell me what to do with this fucking money? Yeah. You'll let me go. You'll let me go. I could go to the casino and fucking just swipe this shit and pay fuck and run up a six thousand dollar tab at the casino and pay it with this card. And you're cool with that. But I can't buy some fucking cryptocurrency. Yeah, that's a little fucking bullshit. It feels like a little bit of a tell. Yeah, that they, they're afraid of yeah. that thing oh, yeah. becoming. It is legitimate. I think it is legitimate. I think Bitcoin is the biggest example of how it could be successful. Is it fast? I don't think so. I think Ethereum probably does a better job of allowing transactions. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I definitely think they're afraid of like what could the possibilities beyond themselves. Like shit, man. We could be fucking run out of the game if everybody's able to do something. Basically, if the whole world ran on a decentralized system, that puts us out. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. So, anyway, so he's just like, God damn it. He's fucking, he's just fucking losing his mind over here. And so he's like, I'm calling these fucking credit cards. So he calls them. And they, you know, they, they're like, oh, yeah, you thank you for your last payment of $37. Uh, you know, your fucking balance is zero and uh, your available credit's like some ridiculous number. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like must be fucking nice, old man. So, uh, but then, he, then he's like, yeah, try to, try to buy this goddamn cryptocurrency and your thing. And it's, of course, it's some fucking, it's some lady named Cheryl from Nebraska, but she sounds like she's in fucking India. And basically she's like, Oh, my friend, I'm very sorry about this. And he's like, oh, God, just, God, just try to buy this cryptocurrency. And then she's like, oh, let me see. And she looks it up, Googles it, and then she says, oh, yes. You're not allowed to buy cryptocurrency with this card. You know what? You're not allowed to buy cryptocurrency with this card. Well, why the hell not, God damn it? Uh, because it's in your terms and conditions. And she reads him. It's like this has been a thing that they get all the time because she read him verbatim from memory the fucking line from the cryptocurrency line on the thing uh, in the terms and conditions. And he's like... God damn it. And he just fucking hangs up the phone. So then he goes and gets a couple other credit cards, tries to do his nose. Same deal. One worked. One of them did work. And it was from a credit union. So I think the credit unions maybe have not like caught up all the way yet. Cause you know, credit unions are smaller. They're like kind of Well, they gotta compete. Times. They gotta compete. But now we're letting you buy cryptocurrency. So like, oh, that's what sets us apart from the fucking the guys, the the big ones. So he goes on there, he buys it, fucking shirt shit, works fucking, everything's good. Now he's got 2,000 fucking Doge coins because he was going to buy like some dumb numbers. I'm going to buy $250 worth. And I said, well, you know, if you spend like $10 more, you just make it an even 2,000. Why, why didn't he buy it when it was fucking, when everything was hurting because, uh, well, fuck, numerous reasons. I mean, the main big one was the concern about the Ukraine and Russia war. Yeah. Uh, that th- shit plummeted to like i mean at one point crypto was like or bitcoin was i think like 18 or twenty thousand, and everything else was like cents on the fucking oh yeah well right now the dogecoin's 13 cents and so i told him i was like see you know if you would have bought this when it was at like one cent zero point point zero 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 whatever the fuck it was at one one point you'd have a shit ton of money right now yeah if you would have bought 250 dollars worth when it was like a 17th of a cent but he didn't. So now he's doing it at 13 cents. And I'm like, well, whatever. I think you just wasted $260. But, you know, I mean. If he hey. flips it, that's cool. Yeah, I mean. I don't think he'll lose. He's, he's not going to lose money, I no, don't think. No, I think he'll. I mean, like like anything, if you wait long enough, you can wait for this to turn around. And it probably will. Uh, well, but. one of the things that was interesting is I was looking at the projections for Dogecoin going into 2040 and like 2050. That those are just are auto- they're all are- just bullshit automated like, you yeah. know, things. But the suggestion for Dogecoin was around somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 a no, coin. No, that ain't happening. I don't think that'll happen. If, but, it, if it said like 20 cents or 50 cents or something like that. Yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. immediate future term. And like by 2030, they were thinking it was going to be like 15, 20 cents. Hmm. Um, I mean, you know, shit, even if it went up to a dollar, you know, I mean, shit, he X five X his money or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they're making, they're making like (laughs) Bitcoin. I mean, I couldn't tell you there, there was regulation that allowed for Bitcoin ETFs to exist. Yeah. 
So that was like one of the things that people were banking on this year was the Bitcoin having the Bitcoin having uh, which is like cutting the total supply in half. And then this thing was like, oh, cool. Now we're getting crypto regulated. And it's now something that you can add into your portfolio uh, to have these ETFs. Uh, and I think it, Ethereum is like on the way, but I don't know how long it's going to take for people to get to start coming around and for those things to actually have like fucking value. But yeah. why would you why would you own an ETF of Bitcoin when you can just actually own the fucking thing? Well, yeah, so, yeah, why the fuck would you do that? Like yeah. that's stupid. But anyways, uh So yeah, that was just, that was just funny. So anyways, Trump Trump said all this shit was Bitcoin was shilling for him. He was shilling for votes on for people that want Bitcoin. Mm. Um so I don't know. He clearly fucking has their vote, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think anybody that can get an endorsement of their thing to move their agenda further, I mean, that, that's at the convenience of, like, the Bitcoin community, I guess, in crypto community. I mean, it, it, I think it... I don't know if either of them are are getting exactly what they want. I think they're both paying lip service to each other. Yeah, they are. Uh, Trump saying that he'll deregulate any policies as far as crypto goes uh and then for for people that are that are in the crypto community oh yeah i'll vote for you and then they don't fucking vote yeah or he doesn't fuck when they do vote for him he doesn't fucking do what he said he was gonna do because that's every politician's move yeah it is very strange though it's a very strange fucking game I don't yeah know. It's, it's fucking ridiculous but uh anyways i think that's pretty much it do you have anything else to add to about crypto uh how, what how much uh, time do we have? 27. We're at 27 and a half minutes. Um, yeah, I think it's rather surprising to hear that Trump was at this thing because this is the only time he's actually interacted with the crypto community itself. Right? Yeah. Oh, this is the first time a presidential candidate, a presidential or a former president or anything like that has been involved with something with the cryptocurrency community. This was the first thing, first time ever. Yeah, so, so that is surprising. I just don't know how many votes he's going to get out of it because I don't know how many people to begin with are crypto enthusiasts, let alone yeah. the general public being crypto enthusiasts. So my personal opinion with the like blockchain technology, I think that could potentially be used to eliminate voter fraud. Yeah, I mean, because it's like, uh, yeah, blockchain technology creates like a a ledger for everybody that everybody can see. Yeah. You can do an audit on it and see where things went wrong or went right. And yeah, there already is like a voting mechanism, a voting mechanism that says this transaction, there's something weird about these numbers. Like everybody kind of agrees upon that. Uh, but for like what you're saying for voting, yeah, that makes sense. It's like everybody has a unique address or a unique ID to begin with. And if everybody has one, it's indistinguishable what, or not indistinguishable, uh, it's easy to di differentiate everybody, but also preserve like their anonymity. And I don't know, I think, and, and then also, also if there's, if there's some kind of mechanism to penalize people that try to do weird things, like you have to put down a certain amount of tokens to to uh, to make this vote happen, and then if somebody tries to be like a bad actor, then they all fucking attack. Well, they don't attack this person, but it's like you're being fucking weird. There's something weird about yeah. what's happening. That there are stakes for for what's there are stakes for voting. I guess I suppose. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, what, what were you gonna say about voting for? Oh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I think that this blockchain technology could potentially eliminate voter fraud, mm -hmm. which everybody's bitching and complaining about. I, I think Trump had a real missed opportunity. I really think that he should have said something to the effect of we're going. But again, I think these old bastards don't fucking understand the technology. And I think that's that's where the disconnect is. Uh, so I don't I don't know how, how long it's going to take for that to get there. This is probably something maybe 10, 20 years down the line we may see incorporated into voting technology. Yeah. I also think making voting easily accessible where you don't have to, like, paper fucking ballots. I mean, Trump is just touting about, we're going back to the paper ballots. 
That's a bad idea. Paper ballots, you can fake those, you can change the vote. Blockchain technology kind of eliminates a lot of problems with that. Now sure, it's not perfect, no system's perfect, but this is, this is seemingly better than paper ballots and, you know, because again, if you're dead, like if you die, you can't cast your vote anymore. Mm. Like, but someone, dead people vote all the time, somehow. Somehow dead people vote all the time with the paper ballots because any asshole who gets that thing can just fill it out and send it back in and they don't check to see if you're alive or not but if you're the only one who has this fucking hash key and you're the only one who can log into it to vote then you, you can't you vote if you don't exist you don't vote then you don't vote bottom line that eliminates all of that yeah and uh, shit what else is there to add about the voting well shit I mean as far as like practical uses man it already kind of exists with uh Logistics like moving inventory for things like uh, mm. an open ledger that exists. Yeah, you move ten thousand units of I don't know fucking a Game Boys or some console. If it's available to all the the company itself and the distributor, like the, the yeah. logistical company that's moving it, I mean that's that's pretty interesting. And then also for, I mean, it's already a thing to have. I, I guess like a, a 24 hour exchange, like a stock market with crypto itself, it's always going. I mean, at some point, I think the stock market itself is probably gonna be a, a 24 hour thing. I mean, it only operates from, well, at least on New York time, it's from like 7, 7 a.m. to like 4 p.m. or something like that. So it's only open for eight hours, but I think the time when it's just gonna be an open circus, like an open fucking market thing, 24 seven. I mean, crypto's already fucking done that. Yeah, true. So, true I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what else to add, but. Yeah, I think it's good enough. Anyways, all right, cool, well, thanks for listening to that one. If you wanna hear more of our shit, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine. Twitter slash X at GameRageMag. YouTube at GameRageMagazine. If you want to follow Adam, you can follow All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. Also, go listen to the All Gas No Trash podcast. It's a great one. It's a good one. It's, fun. it's, it's, it's highly rated by the critics. Is it? We, well, we're the critics. So, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that'll do it for us. Fuck. Go, go buy some Bitcoin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or don't. Or don't. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm not just <laughs> All right. We'll catch you on the next one.